The topic today is financial warfare. A hundred years ago, warfare was about four things, physical terrain, natural resources, factories, and ports. 50 years ago, economic warfare brought in three new instruments of war, embargoes, blockades, and sanctions. Financial warfare is focused on just one thing, capital. Now, more than 10 years ago, the United States Department of Treasury and the Pentagon teamed up to undertake financial warfare. Jack Law, the 76th United States Secretary of Treasury, once said, and I quote, Weaponization of finance offers to the U.S. a new battlefield, one that enables the U.S. to go after those who wish the U.S. harm without putting U.S. troops in harm's way or using a lethal force. Ein Bremer of Eurasia Group said, and I quote, Instead of fighting countries militarily, the U.S. can now cripple them financially. Bremer also pointed out that George Washington carried a musket. Franklin Roosevelt sent in heavy bombers. The new armament of choice is weaponization of finance. On January 29th, WikiLeaks leaked a document authored by Army Special Operations Forces Unconventional Warfare. The document states, and I quote once again, like all other instruments of U.S. national power, the U.S. and effects of financial weapons are interrelated and they must be coordinated carefully. The document further states, of particular interest politically are the World Bank, the IMF, and the World Trade Organizations. Now, 50 years ago, economic warfare targeted outputs of the economy through embargoes, blockades, and sanctions. Financial warfare targets capital, input of the economy. 50 years ago, economic warfare was all about disengagement, embargoes, blockades, and sanctions. Financial warfare is all about engagement. The World Bank, the IMF, and the WTO. The economic system is about real goods and services, while the financial system is all about trust. Trust in money, trust in capital. The tools of economic warfare, embargoes, blockades, and sanctions, are the equivalent of carpet bombing. The tools of financial warfare are the equivalent of precision strikes. Conventional warfare is about engagement, terrain, resources, and ports. Financial warfare is all about engagement, engaging the enemy's capital. To be certain, there are three kinds of capital, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary capital is cash, inventories, and raw material. Secondary capital is equity and debt. In Pakistan's case, what's most important is tertiary capital, which includes foreign currency, international debt instruments, international financial markets, and the international settlement systems. To be certain, financial war that is being imposed on us is via this tertiary capital. The war that is being imposed on us is about increasing financial risk and causing a liquidity crisis. The ultimate aim is to weaken the war waging capacity of the target country. A financial attack is indirect, unattributable and difficult to detect. Financial warfare is about entering hostile territory behind enemy lines. Before we enter the domain of countermeasures, we need to undertake three things. One, to map our financial fault lines. Two, to assess our non-military vulnerabilities. Three, to map our critical financial functions. Pakistan Army has ind ingeniously foiled all plots to turn Pakistan into another Iraq, Syria, or Libya. Financial warfare now requires our military commanders our political leaders and our corporate executives to team up and foil the new plotting. Thank you.